You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. I feel like who art Ed? I'm trying to spice it. Who art Ed? Mr. Wood, <laughs> art Ed, me. Yeah. Either way, it, it's ambiguous. It works on so many levels. I know. That's off to a great start. Welcome to Who Arted, where we explore visual arts in an audio medium. I'm your host, Kyle Wood, and today we're going to be looking at the Moai. This is one of the 250 artworks on the AP art history list for those American high school students who are hoping to get some college credit this spring. I'm trying to help you out by getting as many works from the AP art history list as I can for you. I would appreciate if you could help me out by leaving a rating or review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening. Now, on to our actual topic. The Moe statues of Easter Island are one of the world's most recognizable and intriguing architectural discoveries. About 40% of the island of Rapa Nui, that's the name the indigenous people gave to the island, It came to be referred to as Easter Island after a Dutch explorer landed on there one Easter Sunday, and I guess just the nickname stuck. Anyways, 40% of that island is a protected space. It's a World Heritage Site because these giant stone sculptures have really captured the world's imagination. The Moai are giant stone statues that were created by the Rapa Nui people on the remote island located in the southeastern Pacific Ocean. When I say Rapa Nui is remote, its closest neighbor is a thousand miles away. It's 4,000 miles from mainland Chile, which annexed the territory in 1888. The Moai statues are unique to Easter Island, and they remain a mystery to many researchers who are still trying to understand how they were made and what their purpose was. One common misconception is that the Moai are simply giant heads. We often hear them referred to as the Easter Island heads, but in fact, they're full-body statues. The heads are disproportionately large, and in many popular images of the island, There are moai buried up to their shoulders, so really only the head is visible. But some of the, quote, head statues have been excavated, revealing markings on the buried torso that remained intact hundreds of years after the statues were carved because the soil protected them from the elements. The vast majority of the over 900 Moai statues were made from volcanic rock, a compressed volcanic ash called tuff. The statues range in size with the smallest ones measuring just a few feet tall. The largest ones are over 30 feet tall and weigh over 75 tons. Each Moai statue is a little bit unique, slightly different from the others, although they do have a similar style with elongated heads and long, thin bodies. The statues are believed to have been created sometime between the 13th and 16th centuries. They were originally placed on stone pedestals along the coast of the island. The Rapa Nui people who created the Moai are believed to have used just simple tools like chisels and hammers to carve the giant stone statues. Despite their limited tools, though, the Moai are intricately detailed with carved facial features and patterns etched into the bodies. Perhaps an equally astonishing feat is the movement of the Moai. Legend says the Moai walked from the quarry to the coast. Archaeologists have different theories. They suggest the Moai could have been moved on log rollers or by rocking the stone statues. So maybe in a sense they did walk to their final location. Regardless of what method was used, it was a large coordinated effort with some theorizing that as many as 180 islanders would have been pulling on ropes to move these massive statues. Of course, Ultimately, only a little more than half the Moai walked out of the quarry. Around 400 Moai, in various states of completion, are still in the volcanic quarry of Rano Raraku. The purpose of the Moai statues remains a mystery, although there are many theories about why they were created. 
One popular theory is that the Moai represented the ancestors of the Rapa Nui people. They were placed on pedestals facing away from the ocean and overlooking the village. They're inhabited by the spirits of the ancestors looking after their descendants. In 1979, a team of archaeologists discovered the deep eye sockets were carved out to hold white coral inlays and black obsidian or red scoria pupils. Now, despite their impressive size and the intricate detail carved into stone, the Moai were not immune to the ravages of time. Over the years, many of the statues were damaged or destroyed, either by natural events like earthquakes and landslides or human activity. There was an incident a few years ago in which a man was caught after he cut off the ear of a Moai. He was fined the equivalent of 17000 American dollars, and he was lucky that was it because he faced potentially as much as seven years in prison for that crime. Now, I know in talking of famous art and cutting off an ear, some of you are probably waiting for me to reference Vincent van Gogh. But actually, I think Barbara Kruger is more apt here, as in her work, she famously said, quote, don't be a jerk. Today, the Moai of Rapa Nui remain one of the world's most fascinating archaeological discoveries, with many mysteries still surrounding their creation, the culture of the island, and the collapse of the civilization. The statues are a testament to the skill and creativity of the Rapa Nui people, who are able to create these massive structures using simple, hand-powered tools. Although much of the history and meaning of the Moai may be lost to time, their legacy lives on, inspiring awe and wonder in all who see them. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted, part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. If you found this tolerable, please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week on social media at Who Arted Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And of course, on the website, whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.